all three of our travellers are off to a good start. Now, let's talk to some experts to learn more about health and wellness while abroad. Ideally, we would want someone to come to the travel clinic at least four to six weeks in advance of their trip. So typically, people want to avoid the travel clinic because they know that they're probably going to receive shots. And that's true. Most people will receive shots. Again, it's based on the itinerary. Some vaccines require a series of shots, so this allows us to get the series of shots in a specific amount of time. We also recommend that you bring your immunization records in. This will prevent a lot of unnecessary vaccines if we know that you've already been vaccinated. A lot of the diseases that we no longer see here are still endemic in the countries you may be traveling to. It is important to go to a registered travel clinic because certain vaccines can only be administered by these clinics. Malaria is very serious and certainly one of the largest causes of morbidity and mortality in returning travelers. Malaria is endemic in 180 countries. So again, finding out where you're going and what the malaria risk is where you're staying will be important. If you can minimize how many mosquito bites that you get, you've minimized your risk of getting infected with malaria or any other mosquito-borne illness such as dengue fever. Often we recommend that people bring their medication lists with them and their chronic medications that they take from home to bring enough with them and to always carry them in their carry-on bag uh, in case they lose their luggage. You may find while you're traveling that you may not have access to all your regular toiletry items. Making sure you have an ample supply, especially in rural areas, is important in case you don't have access to these items. In terms of protecting yourself against unwanted pregnancy and sexually transmitted diseases, make sure that you're traveling with an ample supply of birth control and always bring condoms. For women, it may be wise to think about taking an emergency contraceptive package as well. This health-related issue is often overlooked by both male and female travelers, yet we know from experience that relationships do happen abroad and it's best to be prepared. In many places, drinking tap water is not advised. We usually say that there are only three safe forms of water, and they are water that is bottled, water that is boiled, or water that is chemically treated. Never forget that ice is made from water, so avoiding ice in drinks is ideal. If you think that you're going to be swimming or doing any water sports, it's important to think about pathogens that can be contracted through exposure to fresh water. The only really safe swimming option is swimming in a chlorinated pool. As exotic and tempting as street food might be, it's really best to avoid it whenever possible. Generally, you want to eat food that's piping hot. That's generally considered to be the safest. You want food that is well cooked, including meats as well as vegetables. In areas where clean water is a concern, salads and fresh vegetables may need to be avoided. Peeled fruits and vegetables tend to be safer, especially with the appeal of the south. Salads may be washed in local water so you are actually exposing yourself to potentially contaminated water. Let's review our expert advice. Visit a travel clinic. Get all necessary vaccinations. Drink safe water and eat safe food. Bring an ample supply of all of your regular toiletries and medications. Now, let's explore the emergency support options available to Dartmouth travellers.